group accounting is a hot accounting topic because there are many mergers and holding formations. So in this video, we will introduce the six IFRS accounting standards related to groups. I will guide you through basic definitions of individual members of those groups. And finally, we will see the overview of different types of investments, and how they tie to the IFRS accounting standards. I am Sylvia of cpdbox.com and you are very welcome to check my website and courses if you want to make significant and fast progress in your IFRS knowledge. So let's focus on IFRS first. In fact, there are six standards, as I have mentioned, dealing with investments or consolidation in total. The first one is IAS 27, separate financial statements. And this standard prescribes how the investor or a parent company or a holding company shall present its investments in the individual or separate financial statements. So basically in one line only. So this standard is not about consolidating, just telling us how should we show our investments in the separate financial statements. The second one is IS 28, investments in associates and joint ventures. We'll define them a little bit later. So this standard prescribes how to account for these types of investments and defines and describes the equity method of accounting. The third standard is IFRS 3, business combinations. And this one is really important because it defines what the business combination is and how we shall identify one. And then also it says the recognition and measurement principles of how the acquirer or investor shall treat the goodwill, non-controlling interests and identifiable assets and liabilities that you acquire in business combination. So IFRS 3 does not describe the consolidation procedures, but it does describe and define the basics for the consolidation, like goodwill, non-controlling interest, and so on. IFRS 10, Consolidated Financial Statements, is the standard that is directly related to IFRS 3 because it defines control, what it is, when the acquirer exercises the control over its acquiry or investment, and then it requires a parent or an investor to present consolidated financial statements. It establishes the consolidation procedures that the investor must follow when preparing those statements and among other things sets some exceptions, for example, investment entities that don't need to prepare the consolidated financial statements. And then we have IFRS 11 joint arrangements and this standard deals with the activities jointly executed by the parties and there are two types of them, joint ventures and joint operations and IFRS 11 defines them both and prescribes the accounting treatment for both of them. Finally, there's the standard IFRS 12, disclosure of interests in other entities. And as its title says, it simply prescribes all necessary information that you need to disclose about subsidiaries, associates, joint arrangements and other entities too. Now, as we're familiar with the IFRS accounting standards that arrange those consolidation issues, let me bring some light into different types of investments and set their basic definitions or members of the group, I would say. First, we have an investor who acquires some shares and this is called parent or a holding company. IFRS 10 defines parent as an entity that controls one or more subsidiaries. Note the word controls. I will mention it very often throughout this video because if a parent controls some entity, then the accounting treatment is totally different from the situation without control. So imagine this parent purchases more than 50% share capital of some other company and is able to control it. Then the investment is called subsidiary. And IFRS 10 defines a subsidiary as an entity that is controlled by another entity again Note the word controlled. So when we put that all together, we have a group which is defined as a parent and all its subsidiaries. 
Now, investor can purchase less than 50% share, for example, when it acquires more than 20% and is able to exercise significant influence in the investment, then that investment is an associate, not a subsidiary associate. IIS 20A defines associate as an entity over which an investor has significant influence and which is neither subsidiary nor an interest in joint venture. Also, there can be another way of investing and doing business together, which is having joint control with some other entity of some business or assets and liabilities. This is called joint arrangement. And the standard IFRS 11 defines it as arrangement of which two or more parties have joint control. That's all in IFRS 11. So now let's sum up the differences between individual types of investments here so that you can make a clear distinction and you know what we're talking about. So as we have defined, we'll talk about subsidiaries, associates and joint arrangement that can be both joint ventures and joint operations. The basic criteria that make a difference between these types is the amount of power that investor exercises in the investment. When we talk about subsidiary, there's control. So the investor has the ability to exercise control of subsidiary. The indicator here is the share of investor or a parent on the equity of a subsidiary is more than 50%. Well, that's just the indicator because there are some entities without any share and they can still meet the definition of a subsidiary. For example, some special purpose entities. So when there's control, a parent company must apply an acquisition method of accounting when the subsidiary is purchased and full consolidation method for the preparation of the financial statements. Opposed to that, when we talk about the associate, then the investor does not have ability to exercise control, only significant influence. And this is the power to participate, but not to control. An indicator of existence of significant influence is that investor holds 20% or more of the voting power or voting rights of the investee. If it has less, then there's probably no significant influence. But this is just indicator. In this situation, investor applies equity method of accounting for an associate. And then there are joint arrangements, and these are a bit different because there's joint control of two or more parties of some business or operation. And because of the control is joint, it makes no sense to specify the amount of share. It can be 50 when there are two parties or 33% when there are three parties, etc. Method of accounting for joint arrangement depends on the type of joint arrangement because there could be joint ventures. In that case, you'll apply equity method or joint operations. And here, investor accounts for its share on assets, liabilities, revenues and expenses on the joint operation. And then there are other investments that don't fall into any above category. And these are simply financial instruments accounted for in line with IFRS 9. So this was the short intro to group accounts. Thank you for watching. Please like this video if it helps. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell to stay tuned for more. And if you need to learn IFRS more deeply and fast, check out my free newsletter on cpdbox.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.